Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super related to be scrutinizing another swing dance video for you today. But first, make sure you subscribe and headbutt that notification button so you never miss a swing dance reaction video ever again. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the greatest Strictly's of all time. Yeah, I said it all time, boy, all time. And we gotta go all the way back to 2011. And folks, this Lindy Hop competition still holds up till this day. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I will be telling you the absolute truth about who I feel are the winners of this competition. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. Right here, folks, is I'm telling you, it's beyond words. And you gotta pay attention starting from the very beginning. We're gonna go into detail about this one after. Folks, <laughs> a nuclear explosion just went off. Wow. Yes. I forgot about that part. Oh, I forgot this was Steven. Oh, and Chauncey, no way. Oh, wow. See, they were slept on in this competition. I remember people just kind of talking like, oh, their connection's not very good. And I remember thinking, no, I don't think so. They were, they were killing it. Toma and Alice. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, I forgot about that move, too. Oh, yes, Pontus and Issa, yes. I forgot about this. They always had some just outrageous tricks. Oh, yes, the, the meatball, the Swedish meatball. Who is, oh, Jeremy and Laura, no way. Man, he's been around for a long time, both of them. Yes. And good old Sky and Frida. They, Roy, you know, they are consistent. Clean movement, controlled. Just beautiful movement, guys. Oh. Oh, yes. Kevin and Joe. Oh, yes! I forgot, I forgot! <sighs> what was it? Oh, Juan and Sharon! Yes, this is like the first time I think I saw them in a, uh, a session like this. Yes! 
He was the one that kind of started that putting your foot in between like that. Oh, 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 oh William and Mabel, folks. These these two. I think this is when they were first kind of getting into Lindy Hop, just doing all kind of crazy stuff. They still had that boogie woogie feel to them. Max and I need get out of the way, bro. Yeah, yes. Yes. Folks, oh. Forgot about that! Yes! Oh! Man, so much! So much goodness in this one. This is this is why it's still my favorite. Oh yes, yes! I remember this! Yes! Not a lot of people were doing those aerials back then. Yes! Everybody, everybody, I remember everybody was doing that kind of set at the time. Because usually at an event they all have a move that everybody's doing. The Matrix! <laughs> the Matrix, yes! Folks! Folks! Oh! oh so much! Oh, my ranking! I, I gotta... Oh, man. Oh, here we go again! <laughs> See? Every year they always had some new move everybody was doing. I don't remember what it was in this year. I don't quite remember, but I think their first set is when they, they threw in the new move of the year. Everybody likes their moves. Whenever they do something fresh, everybody's like, we gotta do that one. That's, that's the one. There it is! <laughs> there it is again! <laughs> oh! Yes! I forgot about that! <coughs> Making myself sick. Oh. William Mava, folks. Oh, yes. Oh. They they were the hot new couple at the time. So they could they could get away with all kind of tricks. Oh. Yes. I forgot about that little hot thing. See, he was so short. He had so many little tricks that that made his shortness like okay. Whereas, like, if you were tall, you, there's no way you could do some of his tricks. I love that.
Yes! Yes! <clears throat> Organized violence! It's so beautiful! <clears throat> oh, man, folks. Oh. I gotta tell you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> oh, it's the greatest video for me for so many reasons. I gotta talk about this. Let's do it. Guys, I gotta tell you, <clears throat> it's 2020 right now when I'm recording this, and this still gives me chicken skin. I still have it, and the video's been off for like 20 seconds, and I still feel it. This was powerful. At this time in Lindy Hop, there were so many personalities in the dance. You had your Silver Shadows group, you had your Ninjammers group, you had your Rogue Gallery. This was literally like Marvel vs. DC on steroids, folks. And this was before like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, all that stuff. This was at that time where clearly you could see that, all right, these people were the leaders. These people were the, 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 the popular leaders. There was a lot of hate going on, you could, you could see, but... Each group had something to prove in this, and I don't know what was boiling. I, I knew a lot of these, these instructors at the time, and I just remembered there was so much dialogue. It was, a, it was like this war on ideas, like whose approach was right. You know, this is how you do it. Is it stretch and tension? Is it continuous movement? I just remember as a student, like being cool with the instructors, like hearing all this chatter. So th this is the most passive, aggressive, format for having a street brawl. I call it Lindy Hop is that. I love it. Well, at least based on how the, the culture is now. You have events. Well, at least not right now because it's drama right now in 2020. We got this whole coronavirus thing. It's just shut everything down. So I don't know what's going to happen. But when this was filmed, everybody had events and you, you there, there's these unsaid rules that you got to go by. You can't really be like overly aggressive. You can't like get in people's faces. But there, there was just, there's a lot of unsaid tension that was in this performance. There was stuff leading up to it that I remember. And when the time came for people to throw down, folks, they threw down. There were so many memorable moments for me. I'm going to tell you right now, <clears throat> the top, the top people for me, uh, going back to watch this, after all these years, uh, it's, it shifted a little bit. Because usually when you are in your moment in time, you know what's new, you know what's fresh, but you don't know what's going to last in the sense of what's going to remain interesting. Those kind of timeless moves that always can be applied no matter what time period you're in. And not all art has that appeal. And so some of the people that I had rated high or some of the people that were rated high at that time are no longer rated high for me. They're not. Because I could see clearly that either it's just either just the same thing or it, the ideas don't translate now in a way that is just consistent. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm telling you right now. Let me give you my list. Some of these some of these uh, dancers, folks, are in my top ten greatest Lindy Hoppers list of all time. I got all kind of top ten lists, and they always change. So people are always like, "You can't do that. You can't say they're the greatest of all time." Well, yes, I can. This is my house and it's my opinion and I'm giving you some context on my opinion so hopefully I can persuade you to come to my uh, subjective side. I'm going to tell you right now guys, my uh, third place, this was really tough to do looking back, but my third place, I'm going to have to go <clears throat> with uh, Todd and uh I believe that, that wasn't Ramona. No, that was uh, Naomi. Yes, Todd and Naomi. <sighs> Let me tell you why. What they were doing, they were on the side of the Silver Shadows, right? They were the good old boys, that group. They're, they were like the Jets. They were the good ones, the Americans. 
But then you had the sharks, right? They were all the dark hair ones, and the <laughs> they, they were the foreigners. You remember? You remember West Side Story? But this was kind of the dichotomy of the time, and this, these two, represented one side of the spectrum uh, with their group. But the reason I liked these two more than any other group on that side in this is because their movements weren't super complicated. It was the choice of placing certain moves at certain time with the music that made the movements so much more impactful on an emotional level. I think even the audience was screaming at the point that they're doing. So like you can see like right here, there's this, that first moment when they come in, they do a little tuck turn, they start leading. You're like, yeah, I know that. I know that. I know. Oh, that was so unexpected at the time. We just thought we were going to get all these arm twisted moves because that was what that was what Todd used to do a lot, and he still does, and I still love that because he taught me how to use my arms. I was I'm a taller dancer, and I always valued him using his length and his arms to do the most irregular type shapes that just seem to, for whatever reason, not kill his partner. I love that. So for me, they had two moments. Uh, their second moment when they came in, it was toward like the middle. It was right. Yeah, it was. They came in. And I was like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? No one saw it. They like came from separate sides and went right into a swing out. It wasn't like they did something unbelievably spectacular that we'd never seen before. But we hadn't seen that before done that way in perfect time. It was so unexpected, especially going against the couple that came before them, who we're going to talk about them here in a minute. But that move, when they did that move, I was yelling. The person next to me like looked like they were going to call security because I could not contain myself because of this move. They were the kind of couple folks that had quality of movement where it's more elastic. You can kind of see where the movements are going. They dance in the metronome the whole time. So every rock steps on beat, every triple steps like that. They got kickball changes, but there wasn't real changes in the, the, the elasticity of how they were manipulating the technique. So it was kind of predictable when you could see their movements in social dance. I, for me, he's one of the greatest social dancers of all time. Because of this consistency and clarity of movement, it looks soft and comfortable for the follower. But when they were dancing fast, you can see everything coming. So I was just blown away that I did not see this move coming simply because, you know, I know, oh, he's a good social dancer. I know they can groove. I know they can make the movements look quality. All that good stuff that was the talk of the time. But when they came out and did those two moves, guys, that shut it down. Now I gotta say, uh, my second place, this was tough. This was tough. My second place, I got to go with Pontus and Isabella, guys. Pontus and Isabella, when they came out, when they <laughs> came out, they were doing a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, they came from the Boogie Woogie world, too. So what I love about Boogie Woogie dancers that go into Lindy Hop is they got street credibility. It's usually the reverse in the mind. People think, oh, you start off with Boogie Woogie and you're you're like the, you know, the boy band. You got all the nice moves, you do all the stuff, and then all of a sudden you grow up and you get some like facial hair and you get a few tattoos of some black dancers. And then you get the street credibility of Lindy Hop, right? And you stop the Boogie Woogie stuff. Uh-uh. For me, coming from, from the outside into Lindy Hop, I was a hip hop dancer. When I watch Boogie Woogie dancers, I see fearlessness. I see ingenuity and creativity. I see performance. I see grit. And that's what I always feel when I watch Boogie Woogie Dancers. If I had the choice, I would have an all Boogie Woogie Dancers uh, competition. Or let's say I would have a team, all Koreans, <laughs> and Boogie Woogie Dancers that just got into Lindy Hop. Because no telling what we would be able to create. Because there's just, there's just a level of fearlessness is there. And I feel that... Pontus and Isabella had that, this residual of impact from all their boogie woogie. And they came into swing dancing, doing stuff that was just, you're just not supposed to do that. That wasn't, you know, yeah, it's good, but that doesn't fit our box, okay? Stop doing those cool moves. That's what it was like at the time. And when they came out, and right here, and I was like, uh-oh, 
They're doing their stuff. They're getting wild. And he came out with some aerials. I was like, all right. We were like, what? What is that? Then they went back to some Lindy Hop stuff. We were like, okay, this is great. And then all of a sudden, when they came to this point right here, and he put her down, and he lifted her leg, it was like this unanimous collective understanding because they were from Sweden. Everybody was like, that's the Swedish meatball. That's the move. We're going to call it the Swedish meatball. It was ridiculous. I was like, what in the world is this? What's happening? And I don't know if they got hate on back then. I just kind of knew certain people. If you weren't in, you weren't in. You know, you kind of had to work hard. You keep coming back every single year to compete. And maybe you get, you know, get ranked a little higher. And then you keep coming back. They, they came out swinging. They came out swinging and they were consistent. I don't know how they were rated on this. But for me, they are second place. That Swedish meatball move alone. But the thing that really put it down, the, the real icing on the cake for me was when they got to the second set. And I thought, okay, maybe, you know, maybe they're going to, it's going to be cool and collective. I was like, no, uh-oh. He just came straight out. They were doing the stuff together. Crazy tandem Charleston. And then Issa winds up and does literally the Matrix move. And everybody was like, what? Because of the timing of the music. It was insane. They went through everything. They had the perfect amount of solo. And then they got into this crazy stuff that I would have thought Todd was going to be doing. But he didn't do that. Pontus was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to be the, the, you know, the rubber band Terminator. Here we go. And they crushed it. When they did that, I was like, yeah. Upon watching this again, they're definitely my second place. Definitely second place. And I don't care what anybody says. Because this is my opinion. This is my house. I'm not going to argue about my opinion. This is how I feel. Now, I'm going to tell you. My first place is still my first place. <clears throat> For so many reasons. For so many reasons. And I guess, I guess in watching this... I was trying not to get super excited. I'm trying to just see, okay, what's going to happen? Let me just go through this and pretend I don't know. No, no, I know what's going to happen. And I'm going to try not to get myself excited. But it is virtually impossible to not get excited on that very first one. And the first one for me goes Max and Annie. By far. By far. I remember watching them working on some of this stuff. And I was like, what are they working on? <clears throat> I didn't know what that was for. I just remember some of the ideas they were doing. Um, we were at a different event before that, sometime in that summer, and I thought, whatever it is, it's not just going to be a new move. It's not just going to be that. It's going to be perfectly placed in the music. And not on top, and on top of that, you're not just going to get the perfect you know, idea of quality movement. They're like, look, we're just going to make it functional. We're just going to move our partners, get to the point of where we want to get, and the movements are going to be explosive, and you're going to like it. That's what I liked about their dancing. They were so different to everybody else. And in my opinion, they're, they're still, the top 10 Lindy Hoppers of all time, both of them, in my opinion, top three, I don't care who you put on your list, they're top three for me. Greatest of all time, just because of the performance aspect of Lindy Hop. I think about Frankie Manning, you got the social dance part of Frankie Manning, and then you got the performance part of Frankie Manning. Most of the performance part was when it was in his heyday. Jack with uh, Hells of Poppin' and all these other videos. And when I see this couple, I see them embodying this idea of the performance side of one of the second generation of Lindy Hoppers. I see them embody that, and I see them do it in ways that are better. They've, they've added value to that that personality that Frankie Manning was for this particular style. It's unreal. When they come out in this beginning, guys, I was like, uh-oh. I was there. This video does not give it justice. And I thought, okay, yeah, this is about to go down. And then I thought, wait a minute. They're going first? They already have the reputation of, like, slaughtering people. So why are they first? Did they draw first or what? But I thought, okay, they're doing some Charleston stuff. Nobody really liked doing Charleston stuff like this. And when they got to this point right here, folks, I thought, okay, it's over. And then again, it just kept modulating. It kept going up. And the music fit it perfectly. I thought it was an inimitable explosion at the beginning of this competition. 
And everybody else is just picking up the debris in their house, trying to find the black box, trying to find their safe. I thought, it is over. There is no way anybody's going to catch up. But I was slightly surprised because, again, Todd Yannacone, they came right after and they did that move with to, again, show that you don't necessarily have the most craziest moves in order to be effective. You can actually take moves that everybody knows and properly place them in a spot that's unexpected and still bring down some of those, those cheers from the person who went before you. You know, it kind of keeps them on their toes. And I like that. I'm glad that they weren't just, you know, the weakest link coming right after that because I would have stopped watching the competition. I'd have been like, that, that's it. But still, the pinnacle of their movements, guys, Max and Ani killed it. And I'm surprised because they didn't do any aerials on that first set. They literally just came out with massively impactful syncopations done in perfect time to the music. And people were just like clapping like, oh, I hate their guts. I can't stand it. Our sets aren't good enough. We practice, but you know it. That's what I felt. Everybody in that audience went nuts and there was nothing we could do about it. But then, their second set, I thought, okay, they didn't do a, a lot of Lindy Hop on their first one. But then they came out, they did some basic Lindy Hop stuff, and I thought, okay, yeah. They're going to come out there, and they, <laughs> Max does a little kick to kind of get William out of the way. And then they, they kind of did some other stuff. And then I remember, wait a minute, I did that move. Me and Max were kind of working on stuff and harangue, and, and he threw that move in there, which I don't mind. I, I like that. I like when people take ideas and then they build on them. And I thought... Okay, they did some Charleston stuff. It was, And then Todd comes out and does that thing with... That's when I thought, this is close. This is close, but I still have them in first place. And here's what. They did all of this without doing any massive aerials. Because their thing was like aerials. Nobody can touch them when it came to aerials. And I'm not talking about those stationary ones where you're like, one, two, three, lift your partner, catch him. No, 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 no. A lot of people can do that. They were doing stuff where your partner is in motion, like running, moving, catching them, and using the momentum from movement that's already happening, not just like stationary movement and you do a little trick. I'm telling you, for me, that they crushed it just because of that. That's my top three. It's changed. Uh, my fourth place, I'd probably give to Toman Alice, just, just because of the timing. They had some really cool moves I'd never seen before. They were trying different things. And then, of course, everybody was doing this little break chase thing. And then they came out and they did some stuff. And they did this little move where he ducked and caught her hand. That was like, everybody knew that came from him. That was just like the thing of the time. There were so many original movements from this competition, guys. Oh, what do you think? What did you like about this one? My, the, You've heard my opinion. I am still super hyped about this particular Strictly competition. It was called Champions back then. You know, they had like... I don't know if it was All-Star. I think it was like Rising Star. And then Champions Edition was like, you know, I got Street Fighter 2. Not Street Fighter 2. I got Champions Edition back there. And this was kind of what this was like. And I think they changed the name of it or whatever. Everybody's always changing names of competitions. I don't know why they changed the name of this. I don't know if it was offensive to whatever. I'm not offended by Champions. I like it. But I remember this was like the highest level. Uh, and then they changed it to like some Invitational. Which I don't know what that means. I, I don't know if they earn it or if it's just like, hey, we want you to be here. But anyway, folks, th that, whew, that's my opinion on this one. I got to give it to Sky and Frida too. They came out, they did, an, they did a move in theirs that was so original. Nobody did it at the time. This was just like, this was just a move that Sky did. See, he always had moves that he put in his routines. Like once a year, he'd always have a new move. And everybody would be like, what is this move? We've never seen that before. And because he would always do that, he's very selective in where he placed it. You could always remember what the move was. That's what's so fascinating about it. And they did one move in this competition where they were doing a hand-to-hand -hand Charleston. And he turned his partner and then did the move again and went back to hand-to-hand. -to -hand. We were like, man, that's just like next level thinking but it wasn't just a new idea it was that it was placed properly with his partner i'm not saying with the music i'm saying with his partner there was so much control and there was so much elasticity with their movements that you could see it coming 
And you can see the confidence and maturity in the movement that it was like, how do you make it even better? You can't because it's so clear on what the intentionality is that they would nail it. And we still remember that move to this day. People still remember a lot of their movements just because on how well it's executed. Like I said, I don't always equate well based on how, how much we can see the movement coming. Sometimes I like well being the timing of the music. But in their case, they were that prime example of like, look, we're going to make this movement so clear. You're going to see it coming. You're going to see it finish. You're going to see where it's going to go next. And you're going to like it. <laughs> That's just how it was. That's why I still respect them. The consistency on working on a style. That's hard. That takes a tremendous amount of focus. So I probably would have had them like in my fourth place. Yeah, Max, Pontus, and Issa, Max and Ani, uh, Toma and Ali, and I would have Sky and Freedom. Guys, let me know what you thought about this competition in the comments section. Let me know. I want to hear your opinion. Woo! If you guys aren't swing dancing yet, you should. Start swing dancing in your living room right now. I do it every day. I got a home studio next door. We're creating content for swing dancers all over the world. So if you guys want to check it out, I got some free courses, about 20 to 30 free courses to see what I'm working on. I was the birth child for many of these teachers and uh, I got the best of performance and the best of social dance. And my whole thing was I don't want to teach it if I can't lead it and, and follow it with my partner on the dance floor. So my whole passion was making... Uh, social dancing look like a performance make it look like it's choreographed make it look like it's a surprise to to wow people who are not into swing dancing yet but also to encourage them that they're going to be in the position to be able to do what i'm actually doing so that's my passion and i am uh, excited about sharing my free content with you so that you can get a taste of what it's like being a part of our street smart swing community we're all about new ideas and we want to empower you to be able to do it right there in your own house if you guys are looking for a streamlined approach you're lucky because I didn't have it back then. This was like wartime. People were fighting over ideas. And in many cases, they didn't realize that they're just talking about two sides of the same coin. They were arguing about a lot of things. And, and I get that because you're, when you're looking on things in hindsight, you can see things much more clearly. So I invested over 10,000 hours to be able to figure out a seamless approach to swing dancing so that all of the complexity can be stripped away so you can see the true kernel of what this really is about. And most of it is subjective. I basically found out what those objective things are so that you can get the power to start fixing yourself as a social dancer without always needing a teacher on your back to help you. So if you're interested in that, check out my fundamentals membership. It will be a blessing to your life and help you maximize your learning curve and swing dancing. With that said, guys, if I don't see your comments below, Hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my classes online. Take care.